So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us uh, for this morning's Q&A. Uh, we are recording the session, so if you do miss any part of it, you will get sent a copy of the recording uh, following today's session. Um, my name's Summer. I'm the Project and Events Manager for MPAQ, and today I'll just be helping to moderate the session. Uh, but we will. We are obviously joined by a very special guest, the Honourable Di Farmer MP. Um, Di Farmer is the Queensland Ministers for Employment and Small Business, as well as the Minister for Training and Skills Development. So very important portfo portfolios there. Uh, Minister, thank you for joining us today. No, it's a great pleasure, yeah. Summer. Thank you. Uh, and uh, we are also joined by Kent Vickers, the MPAQ president, and Penny Corner, the MPAQ executive director as well. Thank you for joining us, Penny and Kent. Uh, before I hand over to Penny, um, I just wanted to ask everybody to please stay on mute uh, when you can. Uh, we will have some time at the end for um, people to, to ask questions as well, but we are mainly uh, focusing on topics that were previously submitted uh, when people registered. So uh, if you do want to ask a question, though, there is also the chat, which uh, should appear when you hover over the bottom menu and open the chat on the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, but now I'm going to hand over to Penny. Thanks, Penny. Great. Thanks so much, Summer. And uh, thank you, Minister, for making the time to be with us today. We are very fortunate that uh, we understand how busy you are, and so we do really appreciate your time. Um, the, you were obviously appointed to this portfolio in November 2020, and previously you've been the Minister for Child Safety, Youth, Women and Minister for Prevention of Domestic and Family Violence, which is obviously another very important portfolio. Um, a portfolio uh, you have held from December 2017 through to 2020, November 2020. We are thrilled that you are now the Small Business Minister, and today we have some amazing small businesses here with us. Um, we've had a number of people that have registered. Unfortunately, not all have joined. But as Summer mentioned, they will be able to get a recording of this session. Um, so, Minister, did you want to provide just a short update and then perhaps we'll go straight into the question and answers uh, that have been provided or submitted prior today? Great. Thank you. Thanks. No, thanks. Um, thanks, Penny and Summer. And um, just acknowledge Steve Coe, who is um, our Deputy Director General um, for Investment and is overseeing the grants programs and um, a range of training and employment programs as well. So I just asked Steve to be here as well to answer, you know, some, some of the details. Um, just before we begin, just acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which we're all joining this meeting and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, and, um, and uh, yeah, look, I'll probably start off by probably just giving a little bit of an overview of our most recent response to um, to the lockdowns and uh, and uh, really appreciate the um, detailed questions that have been sent through and which obviously cover a range of things including some um, some training issues. Um, so first and foremost can I um, just say, um, well done to the Master Plumbers for putting this on. I have had enjoyed a very good working relationship with MPAQ and with Penny um, for a number of years now. And um, she said she has said thank you to me about five times for doing this meeting. Can I tell you all I would do anything that Penny asked me within reason? Um, so, um, but you know, you it's, you it's such a good organisation and happy to help at any time. Um, so I do want to acknowledge that small businesses. Um, are doing it really tough with COVID. Look, there are, I, I meet a lot of businesses who are absolutely going gangbusters. Um, and, uh, but, uh, you know, I think lockdowns in particular um, and uh, COVID in general uh, have been very challenging for a few groups in the community more than others and frontline workers, including health and emergency services workers. But I would put small business up there as well as being. Um, a group that is much more affected by it um, than others. And uh, so we are we are really conscious um, of that impact. And, and, you know, a number of people keep saying to me that with successive lockdowns, um, you know, it just becomes more and more challenging. And, um, uh, you know, I know... Um, I know that in Queensland, you know, we're doing really well um, compared to some of the other states, but 
that doesn't help you. The fact that we've done, we're, we're trying to stick to short, sharp lockdowns and, um, and so that we can keep people open and training as much as possible um, is, um, has really saved us. But I know that nevertheless, you know, if you are, are running a business that's actually been affected uh, by those lockdowns, it doesn't matter to you that it's worse in other states. Um, and no one wishes that on the other states at all. Um, you know, if it's affecting you, then, then uh, you know, you want to get that, um, that support. So, um, so uh, for this uh, most recent lockdown, obviously, because our lockdowns have been short, um, for the most recent lockdown, the government um, has put together this package which recognises that we only had a lockdown not that long ago. And uh, whereas I think, I think the approach has been in the other states and with the federal government that after you've had a lockdown for, you know, five or seven days or whatever, that's when it kicks in. But we considered that, you know, what one lockdown after the other so quickly just uh, needed some assistance. So you will have seen that we... Um, uh, offering a $5,000 um, payment to any business anywhere across Queensland, which um, can show a 30% um, a, a or more reduction in turnover as a result of the, um, of the lockdown. And it'll be in a comparative period. So, uh, you know, if you're in Cairns, for instance, then, you know, there's a particular period and then we have the dates that were in... Um, in the 11 LGAs in, in Southeast Queensland. So it'll be compared to a similar period, um, not compared to last year, because that was a very odd year, but perhaps to um, the 1920 financial year, or there's an opportunity if your business wasn't actually operating then to look at some way of verifying what your projected uh, turnover was likely to be. Um, if you have a minimum turnover of 75K and up to a $10 million payroll, you are eligible. And, um, and whereas uh, I know we've had, uh, we've had three grant programs this year sort of aimed at different sections of the um, small business sector, um, and, uh, and a couple of them have just been so popular that they have actually run out quite quickly um, and applications have had to close quite quickly. And I'm not sure if anybody here was in that boat. These ones, um, basically, if you apply for it and you're eligible, you will get it. Uh, so there's no big rush on it. It'll be open for three months to give people time uh, to make that application and you, and you will you will get that. We're not going to make it onerous for people. Steve and his team have done a lot of work to make sure that it is a very, very, very simple process. You know, I've heard some um, misinformation in the media about, oh, people are going to have to pay thousands of dollars of accounting C fees to, um, to get $5,000. That is not true. And Steve can take you um, through what that is. We just want you to get that money. And Penny, as the, um, as the you know, the master plumbers, it's great to have organisations like yours because we can only get to so many people to actually be using your organisation to make sure your members know about that. So the, I suppose the, the, the key things we do hear misinformation about are one, it's just for lockdown areas and it's not because we know there is, you know, supply chain kind of issues which can affect people out of lockdown areas um, and uh, all sorts of reasons that uh, lockdowns can affect people outside of the, you know, the prescribed areas. So that's one of them that it covers everyone in Queensland. Um, secondly, that, um, that the money is there. Like if, you, if you're eligible, you will get that money regardless. And thirdly, um, you know, I think the biggest uh, thing has been that there's going to be a really complicated process and it's not. So we're expecting... <clears throat> Just can't quite confirm, but I um, but we're expecting that it will actually open early next week. Um, and then if you have any questions at all, just ring us. I hear people talking themselves out of the grant. Oh, I won't be eligible because of this, that, and the other. We want people to just ring us and just check. There is no such thing as a stupid question. Don't talk yourself out of getting this grant. Can I just say too, um, you know, there's also a lot of media commentary um, about, you know, how much how much um, 
income, how much, how much revenue businesses have lost um, over the lockdown period. And, um, you know, some people are talking in the hundreds of thousands. Um, I, I, we don't in any way uh, mean to insult people by suggesting that $5,000 is about, you know, that that's our best guess on, you know, how much you will have lost. This is an acknowledgement um, that it has had an impact and, you um, and it, and it is a, 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 a way to acknowledge that. Um, the, the other thing, there's obviously been um, a package announced for tourism and hospitality businesses, and um, I won't go into that assuming that it's not relevant unless, you know, I mean, there could be plumbers who are servicing, you know, towns like Port Douglas and those ones where tourism basically is the only business in town and, and the, you know, the tradespeople and everyone else in that town are actually dependent on it. Um, so that's, uh, you know, happy to answer any questions around that. But perhaps um, some of you may have been affected by being declared exposure sites, um, some of your businesses. And if that is the case, um, we have just announced that we will offer um, up to $10,000 um, to people to reimburse them for their cleaning costs. So we'll reimburse up to 80% uh, of, of an invoice. And, um, and uh, we hope that that goes some of the way towards contributing um, to your having to sort of clean up after something that you had absolutely no uh, control over. So Penny, I'm not sure if that does affect many of your members, but I thought I would just mention that anyway. Yeah, no, thank you. That's great. Well, I think you've sort of covered the first question that we had um, was around understanding around eligibility for grants. And I think you've kind of covered that, which is fantastic. So I might throw over to Kent. I know Kent has a question. Um, so Kent, I'll go over to you if you like. Thanks, Ben. Uh, first of all, thanks, Minister, for giving us the time again today. Yeah, um, yeah. You're a great advocate. I've met you down at the PICAC launch. We're here this yeah, yeah, journey. It was, exactly. It was, Great to see you guys investing. Mm. Secondly, I wanted to congratulate the Palaszczuk government on the handling of the COVID um, pandemic in Queensland. I think we are one of the luckiest states in the world, probably, the way we've handled it, because we've had disruptions, but nothing that's really crucified us, like, not like yeah. Victoria or Sydney is going through right now. So congratulations to you and the Premier and everyone involved in the Cabinet for keeping us safe. Thank you. Um, the, the news that you're supplying $5,000 or there's grants available for small business um, is there any way that you can provide some details on how this would apply to sole traders with no employees? Um, they are doing it tough too, and they're probably two thirds of us of our membership who are sole traders. Yeah, who would be doing it tough as well. So if you can explain if that applies to them as well, or if that grant's open for them to apply for as well. No, it's not, Ken. And I can all I can do is just answer you straight up and down about that. It is. It is for. It's an employment. Um, grant, I suppose, um, is the best way to, to describe it. So um, employing sole traders, yes, uh, but non-employing, oh, well, you know, as long as they meet all the other eligibility, um, yep. but non-employing sole traders, no. And look, when we looked at, and I'll get Steve to comment on this as well, it was, um, um, we looked at the Commonwealth payments, and I know there are some questions on that coming up, that you actually can't get those Commonwealth payments if you actually get the state government business grant. And so okay. um, we were, were sort of trying to cover as many people as possible um, with, you know, okay, if they're being looked after there, then we can look after, you know, these other ones. But sure. um, would you like a little bit more detail on that, Kent, or does that? Yeah, still... I, yeah, certainly. I think some of our members listening or will listen to yeah. the replay would like some some further on that absolutely yes and in fact um it's, uh, i'm just wondering penny it might be even worthwhile in in that conversation about that just answering some of those other questions that you've got about the commonwealth payments is that yeah yeah that'd be great so yeah. one of the questions that came through is we understand that this is obviously a federal government issue but we've had a probably a, a lack of clarity around mm. the COVID-19 disaster payments yes. and what the stipulations are around leave entitlements I think it's a little bit unclear um is this something that you can provide or Stephen can provide further information on yeah, I'll get Steve to answer that. We were just talking this morning about um, about the questions. So, Steve, can you? Uh, thank you, Minister. Thank you, Penny. Morning, all. Uh, Steve Coe from uh, from Minister Farmer's uh, department. Um, just in, in terms of uh, 
exactly what the Minister just said. The, the new business support grants have been designed and developed in, in conjunction with the COVID-19 disaster payment that, that the federal government is offering. Um, information on that disaster payment is available through Services Australia and the Services Australia website. Um, they're continuing to, to update the information on their on their website regularly. Um, we've been obviously keeping keeping abreast of that. Um, since the latest uh, SEQ lockdown and the Cairns lockdowns have started. Um, in terms of that payment, there's, a, there's a two categories for, um, for individuals or sole traders, and they are for individuals that lose between eight and 20 hours of work per week and a payment of 50, $450. And if it's over 20 hours, um, then the payment is $750 uh, per week. So that the important part of that as well is that's a weekly payment that will continue to be, be paid, is uh, administered through Services Australia and in line with the MyGov account and uh, through details such as Centrelink details and, and so on as well. In, in terms of that question, Penny, around leave entitlements, and how um, how they relate to that disaster payment, and just basing it on the information that that is available and and um, uh, publicly as well. Um, our understanding is that the um, the leave entitlements that an individual may have that's related to pandemic related leave. So if if you're working for an organisation and it has um, pandemic leave entitlements, those leave entitlements are required to be taken prior to claiming the federal government's payment. And uh, however, um, and Services Australia on their website have made it quite clear that uh, you, don't need to, you don't need to access your annual leave entitlements or um, any pay sick leave or carers leave uh, prior to accessing that disaster payment. So depending okay. on more than happy to, to send that information through to you um, yeah. as well. Um, yeah, it was a little bit grey recently. We had some queries on it. So, yeah, that would be great. Um, but thank you for clarifying that around the pandemic leave. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, we might go to the next question. So a proprietary limited company, um, will they qualify for the state government grant of $5,000 due to the loss of business um, if both directors are actually employed and paid wages from the company? Um, and they've not been able to work recently, can they claim the disaster payment through? So it kind of links back, I suppose, to the first question where Kent was asking around the sole traders. So I assume that would be no then? Happy to answer that one, Mr. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Penny. Um, so only, only one payment um, would be available. So the disaster payment um, would be the the payment in that situation. And then um, if if there were additional employees um, and not eligible for the for the services of Australia disaster payment, uh, there there would be and the other, other eligibility criteria for the business support grant were meant. Um, certainly the business could apply for, for that grant then. But um, okay. there's only only one one uh, payment. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So I think, as Kent mentioned before, Minister, we've obviously been very lucky here in Queensland in terms of how the the minister, uh, in terms of how the premier and uh, your cabinet have dealt with uh, COVID. Um, and I suppose for our in industry, we've been pretty lucky as well, being essential services and still needing to be able to get out there and perform the work. And um, during even during the latest lockdown, there had been probably some tighter restrictions than we've ever seen before. Um, but understand the reasons for that. Um, I suppose our members were impacted by consumers cancelling jobs or postponing jobs during the lockdown period. Uh, is there sort of any ways to avoid lockdowns in the future or is it really just about the focusing on the vaccine rollout now? Um, yes, is, is, is the short answer that that is, um, that is really um, the only way we are going to minimise lockdowns. And look, it's, um, you know, you've obviously seen, um, seen quite an increase um, in the last weeks. The government has been 
really pushing it. Um, and I think um, just seeing um, New South Wales in particular, things being so dire down there, I think it's really brought home to a lot of people that some of the things they might've been anxious about with vaccinations just don't even compare to dying from COVID. It's become a reality. So, um, you know, we've set up this mass vaccination clinic at the, um, for anyone who's Brisbane based or SEQ based at the Brisbane um, Convention and Entertainment Centre. And I think they had 50,000 registrations in the first 24 hours. If for MPAQ, for all of you, um, you know, it is, it is absolutely critical. That is the number one way we can make sure businesses aren't affected by lockdowns is to get people vaccinated. So whatever um, influence you can have on people and you would have significance. I mean, the MPAQ has, has significant influence in standing, but each of you, I mean, I, I consider the, you know, the, the local plumber to be, you know, kind of a, a person that a lot of people know and, and talk to. So please consider yourselves as all having influence on people around you. And I think each of us just has to really um, push that. So we do need that 70 or 80 percent. We've heard it talked about nationally before we can yeah. think lockdowns are not, a, you know, not going to keep on happening. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And that makes sense. I think also this time um, when the lockdown occurred, there was sort of probably, as I mentioned, it was a little bit stricter than it was in the past. Um, and so sort of definition of a central worker, I suppose some of our members were asking for a little bit of clarity on it. And we worked very closely with Minister De Brenny and his department on this matter so that it could be really clear that, you know, perhaps in the last lockdown that, um, if somebody's hot water system broke and they had no hot water or if they had, um, a, you know, a burst pipe or they had a blocked toilet and they needed to get somebody to come out yeah. to their property, then that's essential. That needs to be fixed ASAP. Yes. Um, but if somebody was coming out and doing a quote for something that needed to be done, perhaps that could have been delayed um, because it wasn't necessarily essential at that time that it could wait another week. So I suppose it was sort of getting that clarity and, and getting that information out to members was crucial and we worked obviously closely with um, Minister De Brini's department as part of that process. Mm -hmm. So, And look, if I can just comment on that, um, look, it is, um, you know, you'd be surprised if I didn't say that's been raised quite a lot with us and, um, and um, look, we've actually sort of looked at, um, at what's happening in the other states with the way they've actually dealt with that. And I have to say there is a very broad range of opinions on, you know, being too prescriptive and, you know, and, and exemptions and, and uh, you know, in the end, um, although, you know, there's, there's lots of organisations such as yourselves who are raising issues, the decision was to kind of keep it the way it was in, in a way um, let the businesses decide what they wanted to do. I know a lot of Dr. Young's comments were very consumer based. It was like, do, you know, you, you've got to make these choices yourself. So we had a list of not what were considered non-essential businesses, obviously. And then anyone who wasn't that on that list, and this is putting it very <laughs> simplistically, in a way had to make a decision. I mean, I know, for instance, um, in, in my area, that um, you know, might have gone against a business if they'd actually decided to still operate. And I guess everyone you know, would be taking the temperature of their own community and making that decision. And at the same time, listening to what um, Jeanette Young was saying um, and, um, and, and making that decision from a, a sort of community safety point of view. So, it, um, so recognise that, that sometimes it's easier to just say do or don't, but I think there was that allowance then for people to, you know, to make their own decisions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. I might throw to Michael Ryan. You've got a question, Michael? Yeah, thanks, Penny. Uh, firstly, thanks, Minister, for making yeah. the time today. And Penny, thanks yeah. for inviting me. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm uh, an owner of one of a large plumbing maintenance business and construction business in Queensland. Um, we employ numerous apprentices. Obviously, the federal government has got an apprentice um, scheme to assist business in engaging apprentices. Do you see the state government having a different, having a similar incentive scheme in the future? Uh, we've got um, uh, we we certainly have um, 
free apprenticeships and traineeships for the under 25s. We have our back to work program and we've just um, released that a sort of a revamped version of um, of back to work. So, and we've actually had, um, we've had quite a lot of success with that. In fact, I got the figures through only a few weeks ago. We've seen a 57% increase in the number of um, commencements which is fantastic um, because we, I guess one of the other issues people raise with me is labour shortages. Um, so we need to have that pipeline going through. So that's, you know, we see that as a result of, you know, quite a big investment. I think there was also, and, and just tell me if I'm barking up the wrong tree, Michael, was the, um, there was also some concern that that federal government subsidy was going to end and what was going to happen to those yeah, apprentices. Is that a something of concern? Yeah. March 22, it finishes, yeah. Yeah, and so I was going to say just on that because I was looking at those questions, um, we um, we have a pretty good track record of where apprentices for whatever reason um, uh, can't um, complete their apprenticeships, um, that we actually have um, a, an apprentice support network right throughout Queensland and work with GTOs in particular to try and then transfer um, those apprentices to um, to employers who can actually afford to take them on, and um, I'll just um, I'll get Steve to just elaborate on that a little bit because I can understand people's concerns about that that they just may not be able to afford it. So probably less about well, could we kick in with those people and take over the subsidy, and more probably about can we actually find an employer who can actually continue um, that training? But Steve, do you want to just Provide some more detail. Yeah, thank you, Minister. Um, exactly uh, what the Minister said. We we work closely with the Apprentice Support Network as well as um, uh, the State GTO Network, and, and they're the out of trade register that that uh, network administers, and and um, we support any apprentices or trainees that, that may be facing that type of situation um, through that through that network. The, the other, probably the other main point I make is we've got a network of regional team members in the department um, who support employers and apprentices in, in the apprenticeship. And uh, if, if any, any employer was faced with that type of situation um, as well, uh, our, our, our encouragement would be to, in the first instance, contact the department, uh, work, with, work with our apprenticeship info hotline um, as well and work with our regional team members to see what um sorry the lights have just gone off in here uh, uh, work with our regional team members around uh, what options may be available they, they're they're engaging with employers right across their regions yep. so they may actually know some other employers and maybe able to assist those apprentices as well as, as the minister indicated our focus is really on supporting employers and apprentices and, and trying to get that pipeline uh, of trades coming through as well. Thank yeah. you. Okay. So just on that, you talked about um, the free TAFE for apprentices for under 25s. Is there sort of any, any incentive to assist with taking on more apprentices for over 25s? And I know you talked about the back to work program just before. Um, and I suppose it's a way to encourage more adult apprentices um, mm -hmm. to be able to come on board. So I don't know if you've got um, yep. any feedback on that one. Yeah, look, a couple of things on that. And again, I'll get Steve to, um, I'll, I'll get Steve to give the detail. So um it just um, we have noticed a general trend in um, a, a upwards in the age of apprentices commencing, which is why we'd originally our free TAFE and apprenticeships program was actually for under 21s and the under 25 category just actually started at the beginning um, of this year. And so um, so recognising that that age is um, is actually changing. Um, we do, um, we do already offer significant government subsidies um, for plumbing um, apprenticeships anyway, because it's recognised as a priority um, skills area. And I'll get Steve to talk about that. We also have um, the second chance, um, second chance funding for apprentices. And again, Steve can talk about that. 
just in terms of um, the back to work program, that is actually um, very much geared towards people who are employment challenged, which means, um, you know, there's a priority for, um, for young people because that's, um, that's where um, unemployment, uh, that's, you know, who are most um, vulnerable in terms of employment. But there's also, you know, uh, in terms of age, there's, there's also eligibility, um, you know, in a range of other ways as well, if they are employment challenged. So, um, so I think that's there as well. I mean, we've also just extended our Skilling Queenslanders for Work program to apply to over 25. So that's not an apprenticeship um, program. So uh, okay. I'll, I'll get Steve to talk about some of those specific things. But yeah, yeah, very, sounds very, very, very conscious of that age issue. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, as, as the Minister indicated, uh, one of those key arrangements there that we do have for um, for any apprentice over the age of 25 is it's not only the subsidy that's available through the user choice program, which is a significant government subsidy towards the cost of uh, of the apprenticeship training and, and uh, assessment activity as well um, that many of you would be aware of. Uh, we also do have second chance arrangements and a wide variety of options in terms of if if you're taking on an apprentice that may be over the age of 25 or, or any age in fact, and they already have a prior qualification or a prior trade, um, mm -hmm. there's definitely options around where we can, we can work again through our regional teams and work with you around... Uh, uh, business case process to consider that apprentice and, and look at how we can um, contribute towards the subsidy uh, for that apprentice as well. So I think that's that's one that we always um, try and highlight because it's important to, it, we, we do recognise that there's, there's often dual trades and, and others that um, start, it, start a trade and then, and then look to, uh, to move into a, a different trade over time as well. Um, yeah and supporting that so okay that's, well that's good to know about thing. that second chance um opportunities are available so that that's good to hear all right i might throw to kent for the last question and then I, after that i might go to jody because i know jody has a question so we'll go to kent first yeah you can't get rid of me today minister <laughs> um, no. insurances are something that every plumbing industry or every plumbing company whether you're a sole trader or like michael with hundreds of plumbers employed mm is a yearly expense that we all budget for. Um, at the moment, our premiums have increased significantly in the recent years and, and to the point where some insurance providers no longer take plumbers on as risks. Mm. Is there any uh, assistance or is it, first of all, is the Queensland government aware of this and is there any assistance that you can provide to us as, as essential services to make this a more realistic cost for what we get for our bank, bank for our buck? No, thank you, Kent. Um, and um, look, it is um, it is something that I hear quite a lot. And um, I know when I was on my small business roadshow earlier this year, I particularly heard about it in North Queensland because it's there's obviously a whole lot of other issues on top of your your, your general ones. Um, to be honest, it is um, it, it's a federal issue, but it is one we discuss. Um, you know, I've certainly discussed with our treasurer um, in Queensland a number of times, and are there any levers that can be pulled? Um, and um, I was going to say, just looking at these questions, Penny um, and Ken, it might be, you know, worthwhile actually touching base with Cameron Dick's office about that. And I'm sorry, even um, I, 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 in my role here, I guess I, I can't have a lot of impact on that, but I've certainly advocated on the issue to make sure people are aware that Cameron was, of course, very aware of it because it's being raised all the time. Okay, so we, sorry, we, I don't mean to give you the flick on uh, that. No, that's okay. We can take it up. Um, we've also raised it with uh, Marie Adcher, the Small Business Commissioner. Yes. Um, yes. And when at our last meeting, we had the Honourable Bruce Bilson, Bill uh, Bruce Bilson, on, and he's obviously the federal ombudsman. So right. we had the opportunity to raise some concerns with him. So he is aware of it as well. But you're right; it is a national issue. It's not something that's just uh, uh, happening here in Queensland, mm -hmm. but it is concerning when there's so many insurance brokers now that are now not offering cover 
for plumbers at all or they're imposing specific height restrictions. So it is it is an issue that we need to we need to deal with because if if it keeps going, we won't be able to have plumbers like they just won't start up their own business because no, there's you? there's no insurance to protect them. So yep. it is a real risk um, for the future. Now I might throw it over to Jody. Jody is from Dolby. Jody, did you want to ask your question? Yeah, mine's more around the regional trade loss. We are really sort of um, experiencing quite a loss of our qualified tradies. Uh, we've dropped court to half the number of trade staff that we had available. Um, as most of the southeast, they are struggling. Uh, we're losing ours to southeast. Um, and also along the lines of um, apprentices now, they do their four-year trade, they come out, they then have to go on and do additional courses. We're finding quite a lot of the fellas that come out uh, do not go on to continue to get their gas licences is the main one. Ah. Um, they just see the additional time that they've got, especially for regional because there's no courses available here. We ha They have to travel. They have to take time off work um, and they're just not doing it. They're, they're not even bothering with it. They're just going, no, I'll just do my extra courses to get my qualification for plumbing and the yeah. gas is dropping off. Yeah. So yeah. it's becoming really difficult regionally to be able to supply trade or even attract trade. Yeah. So um, thanks, Jody. Um, I was just out in Dolby not long ago. Um, <laughs> great place. Um, so a couple of things about that. So it's not just the gas getting qual, it's actually the general labour shortage that is skill shortage that, it, that you're talking about. Yeah, we've also yep. got uh, carpentry and cabinetry that we do as well and trying to find another person to, to, you know, to build that. We can build, we've got extra work. Yep. We can't do it because we cannot get the trades to do it. Yes, so can I just say to you, this is the number one issue um, in Queensland that from an employment perspective, from my point of view, um, and it doesn't matter where you are in Queensland um, or what sector it is, you are crying out, crying out for workers. I have businesses tell me they have to close for certain days of the week or hours of the day um, because they can't find them. I was in, I won't mention which was, but a, a, a town out west uh, a couple of months ago and um, there is no tradesperson at all in that town except the plumber that they employ and they have to lend him out to private customers um, if there's an emergency and um, and he's I think in his 70s um, and um, so there and he looked a bit tired when I met him I have to say um, you know but um, so um, I've announced that um, I've announced that um, that we're going to have a, a workforce summit um, in the coming months which might sound like this oh god here they go you know just talking heads but it literally, this is happening right across Australia. Um, you know, you cannot actually read the media every day without seeing people in other states and sectors like yourselves just going, what is going on? What can we do? Um, and I guess Australia is in one of those um, unique situations that we're actually open and trading more than a number of other countries. So nobody actually knows the answer to this. Um, and we have to actually put heads together and work out why is this happening and what do we need to do? And you hear the classic ones about tourism and hospitality that they used to rely on, you know, international backpackers or, um, you know, migrant workers coming in. But that doesn't apply, you know, in the circumstances you're talking about um, or in a range of others as well. So we actually have got to um, work out w what's happening here and how are we actually going to fix this? I mean, and, and there are some people who are already doing workarounds. I've met local councils, for instance, who might be grouping together with, say, six other councils to, um, to share tradespeople, um, you know, and make sure that at least there's some kinds of coverage. I mean, that, that it, they're stop gaps, but at least it's meeting the most emergent needs. So, Oh, I haven't got an answer for you, but please know we are um, we are we are working with people, and you know MPAQ will be part of this as well. To go, 
how, how have we got to address this? I don't think there's a short-term response to it. It is a very weird COVID thing, um, but we we want to come up with some solutions. And if you, you know, are hearing um, any good things or if any of you are about the way people are getting around that, then we want to hear about it as well. Um, so I'm, I'm sorry to hear of that. That is very frustrating and really hard for a community like yours not to actually have those services available. So sorry, it's kind of a long answer, but it is, it, it's a, it's going to be a tricky one. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Minister. And I think, um, yeah, it would be great to be part of that workforce summit yes. and, and, and maybe including representatives like Jody to come along and provide some suggestions, obviously, because um, she's out in a regional community living and yes. breathing it. Yes. And, you know, I, I think it's more around attracting people to the regions and what are the options and how can we support businesses in the regional areas and the regional communities yes. so that they can find skilled and licensed people that are wanting to stay in those communities as well. Yes. Yes. Um, and I think, you know, in the past we've had migration from, from other states, which obviously we are still seeing, but not obviously during the lockdown periods as well, um, that perhaps have decided that, you know, they want to move up from Victoria and get out into the regional regional Queensland areas. I think it's also another issue around housing and um, at places for rent and, and all that as well. I think that kind of combines. It's, it's quite a, a large issue. It is. I'm, I'm conscious of the time because I know um, you've only got a couple of minutes, but um, did anybody else have another question that they would like to throw to the minister or we, I think. Yeah, um, I've got we, one, Ben. Okay. You know me, plenty of questions. Of course you do. No answers, plenty well, of questions. <laughs> not true. <laughs> um, this is out of left field, Minister, but uh, it's something that's important to me. Um, yeah. Prior to the pandemic, I was a, a big advocate for mates in construction, suicide awareness. Mm. Um, with all the goings on of the last 18, 24 months, with the pandemic coming along and the rate of failure of small businesses, is the government keeping record of, how many small businesses have failed and what um, effect that's had on the mental health of the industry, of the community. And is there anything in the plans or is there any funding to go towards institutions like Mates in Construction or to Beyond Blue to uh, give them support because they're the people that get called when typically someone isn't doing well. So yep. That, yep. that's one of my main concerns is I ask a lot of my mates a lot of the time yeah, they're going because obviously if they've lost their business and their family struggling, that's taking an impact on the community, and it's um, something I'm very well, very aware of. Yeah, no, it's um, it's a really important question, actually, Kent, and something we are increasingly aware of. I think it was probably um, probably in the June lockdown. I especially started noticing it was almost like in the January lockdown. There was JobKeeper in the April lockdown, in you know, just sort of come off JobKeeper. By June, there was no petrol left in the tank. Um, by the last one, it was, um, you know, it was it was kind of getting scary, and people are going, when is when is this going to end, and and how am I going to sustain my business? And we really noticed, I think, on our hotline, our business hotline. I think Marie Adshed, the Queensland Small Business Commissioner. CCIQ was saying it, that that was actually, it was mental health. That was actually the really big issue that was coming up. And look, we've um, we've sort of, uh, up to this point, we've been working really closely with the Mental Health Commissioner um, and uh, just to develop, you know, kind of a bit of a, a bit of, it's not a checklist, but a bit of a, you know, here's where to go. We've got, you know, an arrangement with Beyond Blue, but I know, um, uh, you know, we the um, governments at various levels um, support mates in construction. I think we've been, state government's been big supporters of them. You do such great work and of Beyond Blue. But, um, you know, I know um, Stephen Tate from CCIQ was saying the other day that Beyond Blue um, had actually said to them that they, um, they just couldn't take any more referrals because they were just being so overwhelmed. So we are talking about it a lot at the moment, just realising that this is really coming upon us and what we need to do and would appreciate your just continuing to talk to us about it and raising any new issues. So it's, um, uh, and you've got you to have enough, you've got to be able to get the people to provide the services as well. So, yeah, yeah. 
Um, yeah, definitely a very, very important issue. Thanks, Ken, terrible. for raising the question. Yeah. Sorry, I know we've run over time and I'm sure people are looking at you in your office, um, Minister. But, um, <laughs> they are, funnily enough. Yeah, yeah. Me, but <laughs> and giving you the look, the wind-up look. Um, <laughs> so I'd just like to say thank you so much for making the time uh, to be with us today and for providing those answers to those questions. We're very grateful for all the members that submitted those questions prior today. Unfortunately, they couldn't all join us, but obviously we'll be able to share them a copy of this as we're recording it today. Um, thank you everyone for joining us, for making the effort. We do really appreciate it. And um, yeah, please stay safe out there and um, please let us know if we can assist in any way. And we look forward to working closely with the Minister and the Department and of course, Marie Adshed as the Small Business Commissioner. So thank you very much and thanks Summer for coordinating today. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, thank Penny, you. Summer. Thanks Bye. Everyone. Bye. Bye.